Number six, a major artery with a cross-sectional area of one squared centimeter branches into 18 smaller arteries, each with an average cross-sectional area of 0.4 squared centimeters. By what factor is the average velocity of the blood reduced when it passes into these branches? All right. So the main, uh, the main theoretic idea here is that the volume, all right, the volume flow rate through this major artery right here will equal the volume flow rate through these smaller branches, okay? Now there's 18, there's 18 of these branches, all right? So basically I could say something like, you know, that we can look at this as like a little junction, right? We can say that the, the volume flow rate in should equal the volume flow rate out of the junction, okay? So remember the in portion is the big, the uh, major artery here and the uh, volume flow rate out is going to be through the 18 smaller branches. So now let's expand on these ideas. All right. We know that uh, they're talking about areas, right? So we're probably going to be using this formula and start substituting some of the area and velocity in, right? So the volume flow rate of the blood coming in would be equal to the area of the inward portion, which is basically just the, I'll call it the aorta. I mean, it says a major artery, but uh, probably not the aorta, but that's fine. So I'll just, the area of the uh, artery multiplied by the velocity of that blood, the average velocity that is through the artery. And this is then going to be equal to the total area. That's the key, the total area of all of the smaller arteries. Uh, we'll just call them capillaries for now. All right, just so that we can differentiate the A's from the other item and multiplied then by the uh, total velocity, essentially, or the average velocity through each of those capillaries. So now we are being asked to, by what factor is the average velocity of the blood reduced? Okay, so what factor is it reduced by? Now, if we're trying to find the uh, reduction, it probably makes it, so as the blood comes in, right, we, it's gonna be separated into a whole bunch of branches. So the idea here might, I mean, they're kind of already giving us a little heads up that the blood will be reduced when it press, uh, passes into the branches. So we should expect that the volume over here to be less than the volume over here. Now, normally speaking, when blood, excuse me, when a fluid moves from a larger tube into a single smaller tube, the velocity goes up because the area goes down and the volume flow rate stays the same, right? Look. If, if the area goes down and this stays the same, what happens to the velocity? It has to go up, right? So if there weren't all these branches, then we know that once blood presses from a larger tube into now a smaller tube, the volume flow rate remains constant and the velocity then will increase. But there's not one small branch after this major artery. There are 18 of them, all right? So that's why the... Uh, velocity of the blood will become reduced. Anyway, they told us this will go down. So basically to find that ratio now, I wanna bring this velocity on over to the right-hand side, okay? And then I wanna bring this away, right? And bring it into the denominator on the left. So basically this would be the area of the major artery divided by the total area of those smaller arteries, I'm calling them capillaries, will then be equal to the average velocity through those capillaries. Remember they're small arteries, I'm just calling them capillaries. Uh, divided then by the average uh, velocity through the larger artery. So this is what we're searching for, okay, right here. So in order to know that, I just have to find the two areas, right? So the area uh, for the artery told us it was 100 centimeters squared, but remember we want this in terms of meters. Well, actually, I mean, the since they are the same units and it's a ratio, we can actually leave it in centimeters. So I'm just gonna do that for this problem, all right? So this is one squared centimeter. Um, Actually, right, expanding on this, we know that there, the radius is going to be, uh, excuse me, the area is going to be pi r squared for both, right? So there's going to be pi uh, r c squared. Notice the pi's will cancel, right? So I can just simplify this thing now to be just, I'm running out of space. So this is r a squared all over r um, c squared. And then I can also condense this further, right? I can just write r a over r c squared. All right, that's going to be equal to then VC over VA, and we'll have our answer. So now all we have to do is plug in the the uh, radius of each. So it's one all over. Now remember, I really should be writing, I should have kept down here the total, right? It's the total radius essentially 
of all of those capillaries. So each capillary has a radius of 0.4, so 0 0.4, but there are 18 of them. So you gotta multiply that radius by 18, all right? Because that's effectively how uh, much the radius will change by. So now you can clearly see that this is definitely gonna come out to a small fraction. So one divided by now, so one divided by 18 times 0.4, and here we have a value now of about 0 0.1, uh, how many sig figs? I guess three, yeah, three is fine. 139, 139, and that is a fractional answer, okay? So this is how much, by what factor the volume will decrease by, all right? Uh, or I should say re uh, be reduced to, it'll be reduced to, 13% or 14% of its original value. So if the velocity were 100 meters per second coming through, the velocity after this little junction would be about 14 meters per second. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Hope this helped. Please remember to help us out and subscribe. We appreciate it very much. Look forward to helping you with more problems. Take care.